Hi, my name is Mike Van Quickenborn, and I'm a philosophy instructor at Everett Community College. I've come to this baseball field because it will help to set the scene for a story that took place in Ellensburg in the year 2008. It was early May, and the softball team from Central Washington University was taking on the Wolves of Western Oregon University in a game that would determine if the Wildcats would get to advance to the playoffs. As CBS News reported, with two runners on base and a strike against her, Sarah Tokolsky of Western Oregon University uncorked her best swing and did something she had never done in high school or college. She hit her first home run, which cleared the center field fence. But it looked like the shortest of dreams come true when she missed first base, started back to tag it, and collapsed with a knee injury. She crawled back to first base, but could do no more. The first base coach said she would be called out if her teammates tried to help her. Or the umpire said a pinch runner could be called in and the homer would count as just a single. Then, members of the Central Washington University softball team stunned their home crowd in Ellensburg by carrying Tukulski around the bases, so the three-run homer would count, an act that contributed to their own elimination from the playoffs. Central Washington first baseman Mallory Holtman, the all-time home run leader in the Great Northwest Athletic Conference, asked the umpire if she and her teammates could help Tukulski. The umpire said there was no rule against it. So Holtman and shortstop Liz Wallace put their arms under Tokolsky's legs, and she put her arms over their shoulders. The three headed around the base paths, stopping to let Tokolsky touch each base with her good leg. Holtman was interviewed for CBS News' early show, where she said, it was the right thing to do. She'd hit it over the fence. She deserved the home run. In the end, it is not about winning and losing so much. It was about this girl. She hit it over the fence and was in pain, and she deserved a home run. Of course, this is a wonderful example of not only how sports can move us emotionally, but also the fact that sports lay claim to playing an important role in developing and exemplifying moral values. Furthermore, given their outsized impact on our culture, it is imperative to reflect on to what extent they are worthy of our time, attention, and financial means. Philosophers have not turned their attention to sports very long, and I think this has been a great oversight on our part. It is clear that every year in the United States alone, hundreds of billions of dollars and countless hours are spent viewing, discussing, and participating in sports. In Washington State, this should come as no surprise. From the Seahawks to the Sounders to the Mariners, from skiers to runners to bicyclists, and yes, including people playing Xbox, we like to view and participate in a wide variety of sports. In my talk for the Humanities Washington Speakers Bureau, entitled, From the Seahawks to Xbox on the Moral Value of Sports, I will be considering several morally important questions raised by our participation in and viewing of sports. For example, given the fact that sports are revered more than games in our culture, what is it that makes something a sport in the first place? Is competition more helpful or harmful? In an era dominated by scandals involving performance-enhancing drugs, should they continue to be banned in athletics? Are some sports more admirable than others? Is being a fan a good thing? Well, I do not have definitive answers to any of these questions. In the end, I will argue that sports, and more specifically, participation in sports, offers us an important avenue for experiencing our full humanity. I hope to have stimulating discussions of each of these questions and issues with you in the near future. Thank you.